And here at Elland Road, it's a very sunny, very, very sunny day, but um, a cold day, a perfect day for football. The ground in fine condition for football. And this is the first visit that Southampton have ever made to Elland Road in the first division. Because, as you remember, Southampton got promotion from the second division for the first time in their history at the end of last season. And so far, have done extremely well this season. They've um, averaged almost a point a game, which is pretty good for a newly promoted side. When Match of the Day viewers were first introduced to Southampton, their team included names like David Webb at right back, Tony Knapp at centre half, long-serving Terry Payne, the balding Jimmy Melia, and a deadly striking duo of Martin Chivers and Ron Davis, the brilliant Welsh international centre forward who would score more first division goals for Southampton than any other player. Here, he punished Don Reeves' leads at Elland Road. Chivers. Pain on his right, Davis beginning to go down the middle. Melia. Chivers. And a beautiful save by Harvey from Chivers. Thompson to take the corner. Davis, a goal! And Ron Davis has done what we saw him do at Cardiff last week. After 28 minutes of the second half, number nine, Ron Davis, the Welsh international, has put Southampton in the lead. Giles, another high-floated one, and in moves Charlton. And all oh, the, even the whole goal shook as McFarling crashed into the post. Well, that was a splendid game of football, wasn't it? Even though we did only see one goal. And full marks to the Southampton team for the way their defensive football withstood all that Leeds United threw at them. Really thrilling stuff. Welcome to the Dell at Southampton, scene of this highly important first division game, which Southampton must win and thereby ensure a place in the first division for at least another season, and which, if Nottingham Forest win, they may still have a chance, albeit a very slight one, of becoming the first division champions. Now the Southampton side, Southampton team playing the dark shorts, have two England men, number seven, number ten, Melia, in the middle line of their 4-3-3 formation. The man all eyes will be on is number nine, Ron Davis, the Welsh international, who despite Southampton's struggle against relegation, has been popping in the goals with amazing regularity this season. Okay to take the free kick now we must expect him to try and float it to the far post for Davis or for Chivers and a great one by Chivers there's more Forrest Newton was a wee bit slow and he's hurt he's hurt and away goes Chivers And more. Ridley. Barnwell. And it's equalizer. Barnwell has scored. After 21 minutes of the second half. Chivers. Amelia. Payne taking over. Oh, good ball to Amelia. And he's getting that penalty. Pain to take the penalty. Men of iron nerve. Drummond must go back on his line. He can't stand a yard forward. <laughs> Two one. But Pain scores the penalty that might keep Southampton in the first division. Indeed it did, and within two years the Saints were established as a first division force with a team which qualified for Europe. It included Big John McGrath at centre-half, the energetic Jimmy Gabriel, 
original wingers in Terry Payne and John Sydenham, and at number nine, a Wiltshire boy called Mike Shannon, who became Southampton's record scorer. Bond to take the corner. Morgan again available for the short one if necessary. England number five, up for the high one. Gilzine. There. What a great flick for Alan Gilzine. The ball played short to the near post. The angle so acute as to be almost impossible, but you've got to blame the goalkeeper there for not covering that near post. Payne. Payne has not really been able to get into this match at all. Bond. Spurs playing it a bit too tight at the back. It's too close. Caught too often in possession in this second half, trying to slow the game down. But they're slowing it down so much, and Southampton are finding them all the time. Payne, good ball, Gabriel. Yes, Stokes. Morgan laying it back to what? There's Gil Gilzine, Greaves, and McGrath getting a touch. Greaves. When Jimmy Greaves is out of form, he doesn't miss those. By the time the return match was played at White Hart Lane the following January, it was football in colour. This is Davies! And a good goal! In November 1971, just a week after losing 8-0 at Everton, the Saints faced a rampant Manchester United at the Dell. Gowling moving ahead of him, Kidd on the left. The long cross, although McElroy now moving to the near post. Best! <laughs> Sammy McElroy. Morgan. If he can put it back, he's got Best and McElroy! <laughs> Sammy McElroy, the scorer. Alton. Best! <laughs> Terry Payne to take it, faced by now a two-man wall. Gabriel up! <laughs> Jenkins. Kirk up letting the ball run for the angle, but let it run too much. Morgan, goes McElroy again, running out to the right, Kidd on the far post, best near in, and steady made it, to Payne, Gabriel moving outside him, Shannon going on the near post for the cross, Davis is further over, gets the header, Gowling moving up this side as we look. Charlton's backflip. Kids! 5 2 to United. By now, Southampton were almost guaranteed to give the cameras a goal feast, one way or the other. A few weeks later, West Ham were the visitors. Bonds. Griffiths! Oh, my go by Bonds! Martin not very happy, but Bonds is. Nicely floating ball, base! Oh, what a good goal! You cannot play statues when this West Ham attack is on song. Four to put it back to. Brooking, beaten by Byrne. Payne and Hurst. Calmly played by Payne, but he gives it away. Brooking. Cover. 
Davis up to help Jenkins. I think he may well have to go it alone. Yes, he does! Bobby Ferguson to face Jimmy Gabriel. Classic example of sending the goalkeeper the wrong way. Shannon. Mick Shannon makes it 3-2 and West Ham will ask how he managed to get the header from that goal round his man Payne Shannon first time wanted little time was enough for more to get a dig in this is Payne can try one and he oh what a good goal by Terry Payne he's ecstatic and so are they A moment then when Shannon looked as though he needed the first time shot, it seemed he'd given Moore the chance to intercept, but he got it through to Payne, who made space in the box to score. 3-3. No long-standing match of the day viewer will forget this episode. The day Southampton were hung, drawn and quartered at Elland Road. Leeds beat them 7-0 and wouldn't even give them a touch of the ball. To say that Leeds are playing with Southampton is the understatement of the season. Of course, Alhampton just don't know what day it is. Every man jack of this, of this lead side is now turning it on. Oh, look at that! It's almost cruel. The Allen Road crowd are lapping it up. With the second home match running. Leeds United are turning on a brilliant show and the other team are just not on the park. Southampton licked their wounds until they got Leeds back to the Dell the following season. This time, Billy Bremner's back heels backfired. Shannon. got through the shot and O'Neill again good effort beautiful goal beautiful goal Brian O'Neill the scorer he very very nearly got Shannon through but when he was denied the ball came back to him again and really a beautifully hit shot curling into the top corner his fourth league goal of the season. Bremner coming back to help, Shannon! But even Mike Shannon was powerless to prevent Southampton's roller coaster ride the following season. Under new manager Laurie McMenemy, the Saints crashed from fifth place in December to relegation, despite signing Peter Osgood and making a defiant farewell gesture at Goodison Park. Lions using the arms, still Shannon, his Gilchrist, Osgood closing in! That's his first goal for Southampton. Peter Osgood has scored at last in his tenth game. Fisher 
It was a good run and he's onside. It's Shannon. And it's 2-0 for Southampton. No wonder Laurie McMenham is delighted. O'Neill. Shannon. Two players just behind him in support. But that was an even better ball. Here's O'Neill. It was a fair shot. And a lovely goal by Brian O'Neill. David Lawson can't believe it. 3-0 Southampton. Saints fans couldn't believe it either. Despite that handsome victory on the last day of the season, they finished 20th in the first division. The first victims of the three up and three down rule. So after eight seasons in the top grade, it was back to high scoring second division football at the Dell. Oscar got the flick and the referee says a penalty challenged by Troy on Mick Shannon. The goal coming in the 20th minute. Shannon, Stokes. And the goal coming absolutely out of nothing. Holmes, Stokes, Osgood for Holmes. And number three. Stuff between Osgood and McCallyog. Comes Rodriguez. Shannon. Nicely inside his man. But will he finish it? Yes, he does. So the revenge complete, and that little sign then by Mick Shannon. Perfect summary of his goal. Kurt. Peach. McCalliog. Nice ball to Shannon. Still Shannon. Osgood! That's his first here. His first of the season. Shannon. Good up the inside to Gilchrist. Far post is Holmes, and that's number two. Clearance by Clark. try and knock it in his legs were taken away it seemed by Montgomery Mick Shannon gets the chance to get into the scoring sheet oh and a good save and twice tremendous stop That's meant for Osgood too. And two went for it. Stokes missed it and Holmes didn't. Nicky Holmes the scorer. And Southampton have pulled one back. Pretty much out the blue. Unlikely too was Saints FA Cup adventure that season. 
Just 60 seconds from defeat against Villa in the third round, they found themselves in the quarter-final. Four in the Bradford wall. Cook making it five because the kick is nearly central. That is six now. McCallion. So simple. A touch of class is what was required and that's what Southampton produced. As cheeky a free kick as you would like to see, Peter Osgood just knocked the ball up and Jim McCallion volleyed it over the wall and passed the surprise down to Brett. Manager McMenemy's profile was rising fast. Although Southampton were still in the second division, he brought the Saints marching in to Wembley. Goalkeeper Ian Turner had followed the manager to the Dell from Grimsby. Captain Peter Rodrigues, a free transfer from Sheffield Wednesday. Left-back David Peach, McMenemy's first signing for Southampton. Nick Holmes, Southampton born and bred, reliable and versatile. Centre-half Mel Bly, the bargain at £60,000 from Crystal Palace. His defensive partner, Jim Steele, a rumbustuous Scot. Paul Gilchrist, scorer of the winning goal in the semi-final against Crystal Palace. Mike Shannon, 45 England caps in 15 years at the Dell. Peter Osgood, signed from Chelsea, with talent to burn. Jim McCalliog, another skillful crowd-pleaser, signed by McMenamy. Bobby Stokes, the biggest when all. Substitute Hugh Fisher, whose goal rescued Saints in the third round and put them on the road to Wembley, where against Manchester United, they gave their supporters a priceless moment to cherish forever. McCallion to Stokes, who's onside! One Southampton go mad! And on the bench they celebrate, and Stokes, by scoring the first goal in this final, wins for himself a car, and he said he'd already booked driving lessons. Now, was he offside when that ball was played? They'll complain for years, possibly, about that. The match of the Queen congratulates the Southampton captain and Peter Rodrigues, 32 years, the man who came back being given away by Sheffield Wednesday, salutes the Southampton supporters and lives this moment of triumph. It was the club's proudest hour. That exquisite through pass from Jim McCallioch to Bobby Stokes enabled Southampton to win the FA Cup for the first time in their 91-year history. Modest Stokes, virtually unheard of before or since, was famous for a day. I've missed 20 in the last three games, so I thought I'd stick one away for the boys, you know. Why did you feel so confident you were going to score today? Well, as I say, I've, I've had so many chances in the last three or four games, and today was the one that came to for us really Just well you were in fact the top shot today you had four shots at goal in that game do you realize that <laughs> four <laughs> in a cup final that's great no, I'm, mad. Yeah, I'm pleased for the boys great <laughs> right can we have Laurie McMenemy the big lad himself uh, come around that way and his wife Anne here and just look there it's a very lovely moment for you and an emotional moment for you <laughs> I just have one word from his wife, and when Laurie was under pressure at the start of the season, did you feel that very much at home? Did you feel the big man sinking a little bit and maybe feeling he hadn't got what it takes? I've always believed he had what it takes, Jimmy. You know, and I'm just pleased it's paid off for him because I think he deserves it and all the lads deserve it because it's been very hard. Yeah. So you've always had the utmost confidence? Yes, yes, always. We have too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. But Laurie, what about it? Well, it's a smashing day, a smashing feeling. Um, you know, they, they have worked hard. I've been up their backs, some of them, and I expected them to be uh, less than choir boys at times because if you've got a lot of ability, not a lot of flair, yeah. uh, your lads are going to go off the boil and they're going to deal with that lads and ends. And uh, I'm, I've had little, very little trouble with them that way. But the thing was that the writers and the pundits, I'm not criticising them, they weren't expected to know what we could do because they don't see us enough. Mm. They watched the first division and 
I think we surprised them, but I was very surprised that some of them didn't even bother to ring me this week. You know, they didn't come. No, I'm serious, Jim. They didn't yeah. even come to see me, and I couldn't accept this at all. And uh, the, I only hope they don't explain it away by saying Manchester United didn't play well, or uh, it's a tragedy for football. Anyway. Tommy Doherty was very good about that. I'll tell you what, Tommy yeah. Doherty rang the hotel. Yeah. And the lads don't even know this yet. They rang, he rang the hotel, and he had a hard job to find me. They were all over the hotel, yeah. and he just wanted to tell me how he felt for me personally. Mm. And then he rang the chairman, and he, he said he felt so good, and he actually said that he was saying it through the tears in his eyes. Yeah. And, and you understand it, and I understand that. And I tell you what, that fella has been tremendous all day long, yeah. and that club has as well. And yeah. it's the end for me of a perfect day. It meant that the McMenemies and Southampton could enjoy another day out at Wembley the following August when the Saints met First Division champions Liverpool in the Charity Shield. Callaghan. Keegan, little touch ball. Toshak! Oh! Fine goal! The old firm at it again. After the champagne of Wembley, Southampton found Second Division football rather flat beer. It needed the taste of the FA Cup to get the Saints intoxicated again. They began their defence of the trophy against Chelsea. It's positive from Stanley. Here's Lewington. Good ball to Britain. Who finds Locke. Three in the middle for Chelsea. The fourth one going there now. Still Locke. Good try! Oh, what a fine goal! Oscar was up well there, and it's there by Shannon. That's the partnership that mattered there, Osgood and Shannon. Southampton won the replay at Stamford Bridge, then drew at Nottingham Forest in the fourth round. It was Steve Williams who put them ahead in the replay, a precocious Londoner who was to become an accomplished midfield player eager to learn from Alan Ball, who McMenemy had now signed from Arsenal, resurrecting Ball's career and freshening up the Southampton side. Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest were pushing for promotion and equalised at the Dell through Tony Woodcock. But it was another astute, experienced McMenemy signing who steered Saints through. Ted McDougall had come from Norwich with a scoring record as long as your arm, and he showed South that raised hopes of a return to Wembley. McDougall's goal put Saints through to the fifth round, where they renewed their cup acquaintance with Tommy Doherty and Manchester United. A 2-2 draw at the Dell meant a replay at Old Trafford. United in the white shorts. Pearson coming across, McCurry got the back flick and Jimmy Greenhouse scores! Shannon. On for Steve Williams, if he can pull it back, he's got McDougall far post. And the referee says penalty. Williams brought down by Bucken. Trying to get the angle, let's look at that again. Steve Williams going away, he went away well. Bucken came across, and what did the skipper play? When well, he caught his legs, after touching perhaps the ball first, Peach with a chance of putting them in at half-time level. Did it on Saturday and does it again. Did it in the first match and sends Stepney the wrong way in the replay. McElroy. Hill. Houston. McCurry. Pearson. Greenoff. And it was deflected and it's in! Revenge for United. For Southampton, promotion was now the priority. They had to wait until the following season. The ball certainly being pushed around in the wet. It's well taken by Greenwood. And a useful cross. Like a fine goal. Scored by Ralph. Dougal on the near post. Oscar didn't make it, but Nickel following up did. Round number 11. Met by Lee! Boy, near post header. Ball and hand.
handball given against Ashurst. It's Williams. Pick out a man. Picks out McDougal. Boyer. Tutu. Peach. Put that back. Eventually. Nice shuffle. <laughs> Nicely done between the two. Williams. Oh! Williams delighted. Siddall just the reverse. Ball let it go with some nonchalance. Here is McDougal. Oh, what a terrible mess. And Holmes puts it in. Nick Holmes was one of only two members of the cup winning team to still be a regular in the side that won promotion two years later. David Peach, the other. Saints did it in style, playing entertaining football home and away. New names in the side included centre half Chris Nickel and forward Phil Boyer. There's Wardrum pulling away at the back, Kinder going on well, and just a touch, yes! So Kinder scoring after five minutes. Ingham. Thompson. Scott. Four Burnley players ahead of him, Kinder is onside. Turner to meet him. And put in by Cochrane. Holmes, one flick, two flicks, here's McDougall, and that's a goal! That's better, it was, I'm sure I read on his lips, McDougall the scorer, and that's really thrown the whole thing wide open. Williams. Four with Brennan, Kinden ahead, timed it well, Turner's come off his line, the goal for Steve Kindon is second of the match. But here's Boyer, and he's made it. So now what? 3 2, seven minutes left. Here's Pickering. Oh, good cover by Ingham. Up comes Hebert at pace. Ball. Oh, we fed that through well. He's done some good things, Alan Ball. Been under pressure all the time from the crowd and players, as indeed Williams is there. Free kick right at the end. And it really should be seen a number of fouls by Billy Ingham. And I don't think I've heard the referee, or seen the referee talk to him once. It's really a classic case of the home player, I fear. Ball takes it, McDougal didn't make contact, Peach, and it's gone in! Peach, I don't know whether anybody else touched it, but I don't think so. David Peach tying it up at the death, Laurie McMenemy on his feet, all smiles. And Stevenson looking utterly dejected, not to say bemused. And everybody wants to have a bite of Peach. The fruits of Southampton's labours brought promotion in 1978 as runners-up to Bolton. So it was a return to the first division after an absence of four years. McDougall! A very simple goal. Ted McDougall, the top scorer, that's his seventh of the season. A well-flighted corner and McDougall finding time and room to place the header. Click on back and then Goddard is there. The substitute. This was a season of two long cup runs. Southampton went to Wembley again, this time in the League Cup where they lost to Nottingham Forest. And the signing of Ivan Golak from Yugoslavia helped prove that the Saints were once again a genuine First Division act. Oh, it's been turned back into the path of Hayes. A penalty. Everton protest. But the referee says it was a foul. 
David Peach will take the kick with his left foot. And scores. Ball. Boyer. Baker. Now Hayes is onside. Southampton have still got the big men forward. One of them is Nickel. It was away by Higgins. Baker shot. Oh, I say. Little Graham Baker. And now ball and onside Nick Holmes. Boyer and Hayes are there as well. It's going to come right across and Higgins makes the pass back. And Boyer has made it three. More top performers paraded their talents at the Dell. Alan Ball was joined by Charlie George and Dave Watson. Mike Shannon returned. Up goes Watson. And it's there. Shannon scores against his former club. Corrigan again gets the touch. Chance for ball. Decides against it. Now Holmes. Now ball. 2 0. <laughs> he likes that. Robinson trying with glancing head over, misses it. And now there's trouble. Power. 2 1. Well, that was a bad mistake by Golak. There's Nickel now. And there's Watson still there. It's there. He did well. He's taken a knock, but he got there. kick to Southampton. It's Channon. Ball rounds his man well. Boyer. Well, in fact, Steve Moran put the final touch in. Well, what a marvellous debut to First Division football for this 18-year-old. A schoolboy international a couple of years ago. He's on the pitch about a minute, I reckon, and knocks the ball in. Now at the start of the 80s, McMenemy made his most audacious swoop yet. Kevin Keegan, the England captain, was spirited home from Hamburg, where he'd twice been voted European Footballer of the Year. It was a startling capture made in total secrecy. Keegan's enthusiasm and international pedigree were the perfect lift for a Southampton side that was ready to pitch again for a place in Europe. Oh, that was a very, very good header. And Chris Nickel puts Southampton ahead and there's quite a coincidence in that goal because Chris Nichols' first goal ever for Southampton was against Sunderland at the Dell and now he repeats it here at Roker Park. Hind marches up there. Oh, and Allardyce! Buffeting there on Keegan by Allardyce, but he survived. Here's Holmes, Charlie George, far post. Oh, it's got in! Saints all-star cast was now a match for anybody, even the champions. Baker, Terry McDermott. It's going to fall for Souness, and Liverpool have got five players in attack. Souness into the gap. Beautifully done. A goal by Souness but tremendous credit for off the ball running by Kenny Dalglish. All right across to Watson, and there's Nickel. This is Baker to Holmes. And Boyer nipping in. Boyer's there! Three in the centre. Fairclough. 2-2, Southampton were on their way to their best ever first division position. Shannon, to Baker, they were printing for offside, but they've been played onside in the middle, and Baker shot, up comes Shannon, miss kicked it, Holmes didn't, and that's in. Got through the crowd. 
and Sealy in utter despair as Holmes enjoys the celebrations with his teammates. The likes of Holmes and Steve Moran showed Saints could produce their own. Keegan, George, Moran, Shannon wants it on the far post, but Moran tries and gets it himself, and what a splendid goal by Steve Moran. Now Shannon trying his luck on the left with Keegan on his outside. Oh, what a goal by Mickey Shannon. The famous Shannon wave. And another marvellous goal. Watson's header. This is Baker. Keegan in space. Number three, surely. Yes. The Keegan signing was proving a McMenemy masterstroke. It's got a pushing going on between Nickel and Hawley. The ball reaches Golak. Now Shannon. Williams has gone on a run in the inside right position. Keegan's on the far post too. He picks him out beautifully. Here's Keegan. 1-0. So another Southampton corner. Keegan's header. A splendid goal by Kevin Keegan. The despairing leap by Whitworth on the line only forced the ball inevitably on into the net. The Dell was bubbling now. Watson with a lot of time. Oh, a lovely ball on by Shannon. Black. What a magnificent goal by the Yugoslav. The crowd rise for Golak. But credit too for Shannon for that superb flick header in the 13th minute. Shannon opened it up with a header, but my goodness, didn't Golak finish well? That right foot shot, rising all the way into the Albion net. Here's Batson at the other end. Oh, it'll break here for Robson, who's come right from the back and must score, and has. Here's Moran for Southampton. Now Baker. Williams just inside him, but he dwelled too long, and here's Regis. And Regis is going it alone, and he's got the power. Has he got the poise? He has! What a magnificent goal by Cyril Regis. Wilde. And Wilde then was holding off the Southampton man, but the referee waves play on sensibly. Godden's pissed away, Williams turns it back, here's Shannon in space, and the ball surely will break for Moran! Steve Moran gets his 17th goal of the season. His goals helped Southampton finish sixth and qualify for Europe. McMenemy now paid a club record of £600,000 for a goal-scoring midfield player. Strong, 2-1. Keegan. Armstrong at the back of the area. And it's there. David Armstrong was followed a year later by the world's number one goalkeeper, Peter Shilton. If Keegan had not suddenly left for Newcastle, surely McMenemy's jigsaw would have been complete. He had Shilton at the peak of his powers, a new centre-half from Oxford in Mark Wright, and England's World Cup fullback and captain in Mick Mills. In attack, there was a whippet on the wing, who developed into one of the First Division's most lively lads. Wallace. Oh, Danny Wallace! What a tremendous goal! Oh, well played, Moran. And Uf Wallace was in there, Castles is still in there with a chance, and he took it in the end. So Stevens into Hill. And Hill gets his shot in. Oh, what a fine goal! And just the tonic Luton were looking for. And Tish. Turner. And wide it goes to Moss. is in on Wallace's pass. Wallace is making ground. Oh. Well, he still battled back. Look at that from Castles. Mills. Armstrong. Chance of a shot from him, left foot. It's in! David Armstrong. Turner. 
That's a good ball. Stevens, outside him, Ricky Hill. And, oh, what a chance! Good year! Yes! Chilton's made a mistake! And good year has scored! That match was typical of the McMenemy years. Southampton always tried to play with a swashbuckling style under his much-loved predecessor, Ted Bates. But McMenemy's presence and personality attracted a queue of top players to what was a satellite town in football terms. Not now, though. David Armstrong. And a chance now for Foyle. And the referee is giving the penalty. Well, it was a rather theatrical piece of play by Foyle. Grobola obviously felt that he made a genuine attempt to go for the ball. But the referee, Brian Stevens, thought otherwise. A chance for Moran to give Sutton an early lead. And he does so comprehensively. Apparent indecision, I wonder whether that's so. Armstrong. Liverpool have certainly had more of the play since they went behind. And here's Dalglish with a chance to make it one each. And he does. They well have gone off right in the end, but I'm sure that Dalglish will play in the goal and with every justification for doing so. Free kick right on the edge of the shadow of the stand. Kennedy. Here's Sammy Lee. And here's Johnston. Williams it reaches Moran Wallace in the middle wants it early misses it but Holmes doesn't two apiece Nickel and Holmes is onside and not a bad try yes it's in I say what a marvellous effort from Ricky Holmes at the start of the 1983-84 season, which was to be Southampton's best ever in the first division, the lineup included another golden oldie at number nine. Frank Worthington was one of the game's real artists and found himself a stage at the Dell where his gifts were appreciated. Mick Mills and company made a determined assault on the league title. Oh, that was a nasty one. Williams did well, kept it down well. Maybe a touch for Worthington. Tries it himself. Oh, what a cracker! What a cracker! That's a marvellous one. Nick Holmes. Well, that runs kindly. Holmes and Armstrong. David Armstrong with an absolute gift. Southampton that season were almost good enough to walk on water. finish with Swan Lake, the Saints were back to the drama of the FA Cup. The fourth round produced a local derby at Fratton Park with a frantic finish. It's the last knockings now, forward by Worthington, and Armstrong's got Wallace and Moran on the other side, and Moran is coming in, and Southampton have snatched it right at the very end in stoppage time. The fifth round, match of the day live at Ewood Park support for South Anthony if he can look round they're all a long way away though he has to go up to the line and Armstrong David Armstrong gets the touch at the near post from Steve Moran's brilliant run
in the lead, Southampton were pushing Liverpool all the way. And Wright has moved up to the far post for the return. And Gobble out changed his mind. What is so I say? What a magnificent goal! Lovely ball by Worthington. Fine cross by Dennis. But Mark Wright, who started it, was the fellow who got the nod down. But this was brilliant. Hanson trying to ease him away, which he does. Cross is too strong. Puckett needs help. Sees Dennis. What? Extraordinary header, really, because it seemed as though he wasn't sufficiently far wide. But he got it very much off the side of his head and it flew past the double up. Saints finished runners-up in the championship and beaten semi-finalists in the FA Cup. The following season, another star arrived. And Jordan climbed and scored! What a start for Southampton and what a start for Joe Jordan. Oh, and it's up into the roof of the net. And Joe Jordan turns to take the salute. And the two big fellows who were doubtful until this morning. Mark Wright and Kevin Bond are both forward, almost on the line. Oh, and that's gone in off the defender. Steve was the player who seemed to get his head to it. Ah, well played by Gibson. He's looked Coventry's brightest uh, performer this afternoon, but he got a knock on that last challenge. Meantime, it's David Bennett on the ball, with Butterworth going up outside him. That's Bennett's shot, and here's Regis, surely. Yes! Jordan, and here's Armstrong, and can Moran get it in? Southampton, 2-1 in front after 76 minutes. But it was farewell to McMenemy after 12 years. He left for Sunderland, and his successor Chris Nicholl enjoyed an FA Cup run in his first season. Saints were away to Brighton in the sixth round. So Southampton open the scoring against the second division club. Oh now, can Southampton break here? This is Townsend. Was to come, but he could have gone right or left. He's picked out Cockrell. Oh, and he's danced all the way through. But Saints lost to Liverpool in the semi-final. The following season, Nicholl signed Northern Ireland's World Cup centre forward Colin Clark from Bournemouth, and he made an immediate impact. Clark scored a hat-trick on his debut, something no other Southampton player had done before him, and finished his first season at the Dell with 20 league goals in 33 games. It was an invaluable contribution in a season when Saints finished mid-table and lost to Liverpool in the semi-finals of the Littlewoods Cup. Clark followed up with 16 league goals in 1987-88. His main support came from Danny Wallace, whose brother Rodney was now also making an impression, and the midfield guile was supplied by veteran Jimmy Case, the elegant Glenn Cockrell, and a young Andy Townsend. But if the Shapington team was changing in the late 80s, so was the style of football presentation on television. Match of the day now dealt exclusively with the FA Cup. Derek Statham's penalty at Derby couldn't keep Saints in the FA Cup in 1989. But in 1990, rising star Matthew Letizia shook Spurs at White Hart Lane in the third round. In the fourth round at the Dell, a header by defender Neil Ruddock sank Oxford. But Saints had to go to Anfield in round five without the injured Letizia. Without their trump card, they were well beaten by the holders. McMahon, Beardsley, oh well played by Beardsley! South Hill Club is held in great affection everywhere. For over a century, the Saints have played the game the right way. And carry on to Stokes, who's onside! What 